So, morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Uh, so, as we were saying before, the recording went on. Lovely spring day here in South Africa. Typical English summer's day. Grey, overcast, <laughs> wet. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we have to make our uh, international visitors feel at home, even if it's virtually. So, Ed, I hope, uh, hope you're comforted by our, <laughs> our weather here. So, yeah, I appreciate this, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, this morning, Mpumalelo is... Uh, I don't know, he's got his toolbox on the screen. I'm a little bit worried about that, you know. I mean, you know, you start the morning <laughs> off with, with somebody's toolbox on the screen. It could go, could, could go any direction from here, but uh, who knows? So, uh, Lee, I think we'll probably just uh, dive straight in and see what he's got inside and, uh, and take it away from there. So, Mpumalela, over to you. All right. Good morning to everyone. It's great to see you again. Um, yeah, it says the toolbox here. Yeah, it's, it's been quite an interesting process for me writing this. Uh, one, because I, I, I wasn't sure which topic to write on. I, I had so much going on in my mind. At some point, I wanted to write about the value of a human being uh, as to what is a human being's worth and so forth. Uh, but after a bit of back and forth in my own head, I ended up with this uh, with the toolbox uh, which I'll just I'll just read through, and I guess we'll talk a little bit um, about it after that. But also, I, in in writing this, I had so many ideas and so many things going through my head. So there was the whole homework of trying to hone it down, trying to compress it. Uh, so yes, there are thoughts that didn't make it onto this page, uh, but I'll I'll read what's what's on there now. Uh, so yeah, it's the toolbox. Um, a, a toolbox contains various tools, tools of different shapes and sizes. Each tool made for a distinct purpose. Each tool becoming relevant and in the same breath irrelevant depending on the types of work to be completed. A hammer is the most perfect tool when it comes to nailing two pieces of wood together. However, if a hammer insists that it wants to cut the wood as well, it will prove most destructive. Wisdom dictates that the specific job to be completed will determine the tool that is fit for purpose. Human beings tend to insist that their thinking, concept, and systems are the correct ones. Individualism versus collectivism, democracy versus socialism, conservative versus liberal, and many other align ourselves with. Concepts, thoughts, and systems are like tools in a toolbox. They are great when they're appropriate for the case, but can be the worst instrument when the need is not befitting. I would even argue that a system is at its best when it is at equilibrium of opposite factors. Um, democracy versus uh, socialism. Democracy may be the best tool for most jobs. Nevertheless, there are instances where socialistic concepts play a better role. Uh, the current system in America of winner-takes-all capitalism, with the assurance that the benefits will spread downwards to everyone, has led to several difficulties. The two I can mention is that all the decisions that affect society are now being made by a few super rich and that the demands of lobbyists always prevail over public sentiment. Interestingly, it's being found that when it comes to gun control laws, 90% uh, of America are for the control laws to be tightened up, but the lobbyists, because they have the money and they can uh, shift things and lobby for guns, their, their uh, lobbying tends to prevail over public sentiment. Interestingly, the argument against socialism is that it concentrates power to government. Yet, the winner-takes-all democracy has concentrate, concentrated power to the corporate. Society is left powerless with only a vote as a form of some power wielded once uh, in a couple of years. The balance of government, corporate, and social power in the right measure 
and for the correct purpose is likely to bring an optimal and equitable result. In a social democracy like those in Scandinavian countries with elements of both capitalism and socialism intact, the worst abuses of a winner-take-all corporate rule system are avoided. In the same manner, there are vehement arguments about which is better between individualism and collectivism. A case is even made about which between the two leads to progress. Again, each are beset with pros and cons, yet can yield the best possible outcomes if there is not a stubborn de determination that one is correct and the other is wrong. Individualism in all its beauty produces strength and ensures the maximization of the gifts and potential of an individual. However, these gifts and talents find purpose in others. The gains of individualism find expression and become exponential in collectivism. It is interesting that most wealthy individuals tend to philanthropy when they have attained much of their desires. Our viewpoint must take into consideration that the dynamism of life demands a deep understanding of the context and that which is best for that context. By extension, it must also not be lost to us that a system may be perfect in the correct context, but damaging in an incorrect one. Interestingly, on that point, um, one of my thoughts has been that it's interesting that South Africa is a country of two economies or we tend to say it's uh, two countries in one, yet the economic system works as if it's just one country having the same experience. There is a time and season under the face of the sun, a time to cry and a time to laugh. Imagine an individual laughing out loud and continuously throughout a funeral. Laughter is good, but not at a funeral. The proposition is that wisdom is the most critical virtue necessitated by the dynamism mentioned earlier. For it has the inherent quality of insight and can correctly determine the accurate response in the right measure. I leave you with these words. A new broom sweeps clean, but an old broom knows the corners. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, I, that's what I wrote with the request that I must write something or my thoughts. And I, I hope I've summed it up in a way that's, that's clear as to what argument I am making. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mpumalela. Yeah, I think, uh, I think what the says to me is just chuck out all the rules and see what happens. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, no, just uh, <laughs> jokes aside. But yeah, no, I think exceptionally well written and, and lots of thought that's gone into it clearly. So yeah, love to hear people's uh, people's discussion uh, around that. I think lots lots to ponder about and, uh, and lots to debate. So, um, sorry, yeah. Ivan, yeah. I'm trying to unshare if there's such an English word. I'm, I can't <laughs> see how I do that now. Okay, uh, I should be able to stop it for you. Let me do it. There we go. There you go. Right. Um, good. Okay. So uh, let's uh, see. I see Trevor Carty has been fiddling with his fun and drinking his coffee. So Trevor, we're going to get across to you first because you're unmuted. Uh, beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, well done, Pumalelo. I really enjoyed that. And uh, if you don't mind me taking your analogy of the toolbox one, one little bit further with a, a story. Um, and it's really about not just the tools that are inside the toolbox, but it is who is carrying the toolbox. So a friend of mine recently got a very small dent in his Bentley. And it was right there at that annoying when you're sitting behind your steering wheel of your 5 million rand car and you look down the bonnet to the road in front of you and here you see this ever so slight crease from where someone has just lent their bum on your, on your fender. And uh, I said to him, doesn't it upset you? He says, it upsets me terribly. I said, so why don't we get it fixed? He says, well, you know, it's a specialist car 
Uh, you know, there's only one panel beater in the country. He says, and uh, I really don't know the guys. And you know, I said, well, I do know the guys. And uh, the guy's name is Craig Lipschitz. And he owns a company called Blue Spec. And Blue Spec are the largest panel beaters in South Africa. I said, he's a friend of mine. Um, let's, let's make a call and let's pop in there and see what he says. And we popped in there. And uh, Craig gave us immediately his attention. And he looked at this and he said, wow, this must really, really bother you when you look down this bonnet of your car every morning when you're on the open road in this beautiful machine. He says, how long have you had it? He says, no, less than a month. He says, well, then it must really upset you more. He says, yeah, it really does. He says, look, it's a, it's, it's a hell of an interesting place to, to have a, a, a dent like you've got here. He says, um, but you know, you, you drive a priority car. It's, a, it's quite a pricey claim. Um, and I mean, how long would you like to go without your car for? He said, no, for as little as possible. So he said, well, we could probably get it done inside of three or four days. He says, yeah, yeah, he could cope without his car for three or four days. He says, um, but it's going to cost you somewhere between 35 and 55,000 Rand for the job. He says, no, he says, you know, that's small money compared to what I've paid for this car. And when I look down the bonnet every time and I see that thing, he said, if it was 55 grand and it took three days, I'd be quite happy to pay that. He says, well, then do me a favor, pop your hood. And he pops the hood and Craig goes inside and he comes out with the smallest of toolkits. Funny, it's funny that we're talking about toolkits. And he opens this toolkit and inside of it is a very small hammer. I think you started with a hammer. And it had a rubber head on it. And it looked like a, a teardrop. And he put his hand inside of this fender and he just lightly tapped it once and this bump came out and this car was back in pristine condition as it it had been driven off the floor three and a half weeks ago he says um would you like a cappuccino while we draw up your invoice <laughs> and and he looks at me says i beg your pardon he says yeah yeah we agreed that uh, i would have it back to you within three to four days and you agreed on 55,000 Rand for the job. He says, no, 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 no. He says, it's just taking you less than three minutes to do the job. And you now want to charge me 50. He says, well, hold on, hold on. The job might have taken me three minutes, but I had the right tools and my 35 years of experience taught me exactly where to hit it to get it to this condition. So Mpumalelo, I really love that. Thank you very much. Uh, well done. Great, thank, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's a per perfect example of uh, you know people think because you can do something quickly and efficiently, it means it should cost less. And that uh, what what about the the training experience that's taken to get you there? So yeah, thanks for that. I really I really enjoyed that. So good. So uh, let's go across to man with an interesting toolkit, Trevor. Now let's see. Go. We might as well do the Trevors to start off the day. So uh, over to you, Trevor. All right, thank you, Mpumalela. I, I think these little stories being given by everyone um, is fantastic to make you think. Uh, your last comment, uh, I noted two uh, that interested me. Let's begin with the first one. Uh, the system is at its best when it uh, is in uh, an equilibrium of opposite factors. Um, that's quite interesting. Uh, and I tend to think that's what's causing the problem uh, in America at the moment. Uh, they are so opposite uh, that they are fighting each other and they can't move the country forward uh, at the moment. So uh, I want to think about that one a little bit more. Uh, but I think you make a pertinent point in your summary and that it's all about context. Uh, and, it's, and it's so easy to look around the world and say, okay, look, uh, up there in the Scandinavian countries, this is what works. But uh, at the moment, we have a context right here in South Africa, which is affecting each and every one of us. Uh, and it's uh, on top of the COVID-19 crisis, which is ac accelerating more and more negatives um, that are affecting people. We've got a huge context going on here, and we've got to start asking ourselves, well, why does it seem that so many people from the rest of Africa are looking to flood into South Africa, or are they? Uh, what is the context of that story? And when you said we have uh, two different economies playing here, I, I think it's absolutely spot on. When Trevor was talking of the Bentley story, I was wondering how that Bentley story would actually go down 
uh, in uh, where most people in South Africa live uh, at the moment would they understand what a Bentley is. Uh, and so context is so relevant uh, today. And uh, how do you come up with a structure? So I'm interested in what you talked about there as uh, democracy versus socialism. Um, is it a combination of these? And it's all about context. So uh, again, I go back to we never ever came up with an answer to the question we posed about 50 uh, wisdoms chats ago, and that is what type of system would we put in place right now uh, if we were dropped like Mr. Bean uh, and that was it. We sat on our own island uh, with a hundred odd people. I don't think we actually came up with the solution for what to do in South Africa right now. Um, and I think you've, you've framed it very well. So it's got me thinking. Uh, I just love these stories. And the fact that you actually went out and wrote it. Um, I wonder what mark I'll give you. Um, no, let me find out what other people will do. I'll mark your project and I will email it to you, Pumalela. <laughs> Thank you, Teacher Trevor. Uh, we appreciate that. So, yeah, I think uh, we have to go to Herman next. So, Herman, across to you. Thanks, uh, <clears throat> Pumalela. I enjoyed your story. And um, Having the right toolkit uh, is actually something which is very relevant for life in general. And we actually sometimes underestimate the size of the cool toolkit we have to carry because of situations we are not foreseeing. And, um, and if we haven't got all the tools in our toolkit, we might end up in deep trouble. Um, it was the first time that I um, was confronted with the fact that um, the opposite of, to democracy is socialism. I didn't think it is actually. I thought uh, the opposite to democracy would be dictatorship and stuff like that. Because <clears throat> as you pointed out yourself with the Nordic countries and I went into Germany uh, as well, we've got a very strong social kind of aspect in our democracy uh, like like Sweden and, and other Nordic countries have. Um, we even created a, a, a um, um, economic policy, which is called social market economy, created by Ludwig Erhard after the Second World War, which actually um, enabled Germany to become one of the, the biggest economic powers in the world. And Interestingly enough, not necessarily carried by 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 big um, by big companies, but by what we call the middle stand. In other words, medium-sized um, businesses are the backbone of the German economy. And going back to a toolkit, you can imagine that in such a um, great variety of, of 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 businesses, that toolkits are extremely important having the right ones in order to kind of hammer the um, things uh, into a successful kind of solution. Um, yeah, uh, the interesting aspect also, I think capitalism is not necessarily a bad system, but I think we're using the, the, the wrong tools within, within the system going back to your toolkit story. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Herman. Yeah, it's, it's, money's always the wrong tool. So yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> well, who is it? I don't know. So yeah, Stella, what do you think is an accountant? Morning, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to put my accountant hat on now. Um, I love the analogy. Um, Mpumalelo, that was a, such a nice um, way of um, putting your message across. Um, I think you've got really a gift for, for words, um, uh, bringing a concept through to someone. So uh, two words that stood or two thoughts that came to mind is um, the purpose of the tool and um, 
what is the intended outcome um, what is relevant so those i think those um terms is is quite important um when you look at the system for even an individual in a certain situation what tools are you going to use um in mediation we we uh, also learn about using different tools for different situations so you you've got to um um, analyze the situation and then act accordingly. Yeah, so brilliantly um, spoke, uh, spoken and written. Well done. Thanks, Melelo, for sharing it with us. Thanks, thanks, Stella. So yeah, so the bigger, bigger the problem, the bigger the hammer. I think is, is the way it goes. Uh, tools for the right situation. I'm not too sure. We better check with our legal lady on that. So Una, let's come across to you. I'm actually almost never wearing my legal hat nowadays. So I'm trying to get out of my my legal brain and legal conditioning. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting way of um, looking at it as, as tools um, because it really says that all those systems in the end are the um, to, to serve whatever purpose we want to to get to, but I, I I think the and that one that and I think it's a it's a very important point that that not one tool is fit for every situation and that we do need to to be very aware of the difficult tools we've got available and how how we can best. Um, use it to our advantage, but I, th I think that the 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 problem is that often it's um, the the people holding the tools like I think Trevor was also saying in the beginning that there's a there's a power problem that um, some some of us feel like we have no 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 um, what's the word no power at ourselves to sort of craft anything we sort of in the hands of other people using these tools as it suits them and um, for me it would be um, important that we find a way that um, individuals can yeah you know, i think that there can be more responsibility um in general um and, and uh, with the people holding the tools and that comes back again to responsible leadership but also including um inclusive ways of debating and and getting to what the best tools are and recrafting what we need and not getting stuck in what was used historical um you know, so none of that makes any sense <laughs> i think <laughs> Um, anyway, but it's it's very interesting. Thank you, Paulina. Thanks, thanks, Anna. All right, uh, Donovan, let's come across to you next. Morning, everyone. Yeah, um, I don't have much to say. I was just thinking of the hands that hold the tools also play an important role. So you might have the right tools, but if you don't have the right hands, you can end up with the wrong results. So it's... Uh, it's more complicated than just the right tools. Uh, yeah, that's that's my thoughts. Thank you. All right, thanks, Donovan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you put the put the wrong tools in the wrong hands, or the right tools in the wrong hands. You're going to definitely get the wrong results. So yeah, interesting point there. So, Master, let's come across to you next. Yeah. Thanks. Uh uh thanks Mpumelelo. Uh, you know uh, from time to time you you visit different tools that you have used over time and no. you realize that these tools can you hear me oh okay yes you realize that these tools uh, haven't you know achieved what you wanted to achieve over time and uh, and you you wasted time with those tools uh, i mean the 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 first example by trevor uh, the tool that could fix something for five minutes i mean less than five minutes and then uh, if that gentleman had picked the wrong tool he could have even had to you know replace the the whole bonnet uh, by using the the tool now quite an interesting uh, uh, write-up uh, because this morning, I 
I came across a letter, which is a tool, by the way. Uh, the president of the country used a letter and address the scourge of, of, of poverty, I mean, of, of, of corruption. And he wrote a very nice letter, quite an embracing letter. And uh, unknowingly, for those who also used the letter to write to him, uh, the former president wrote, used a tool, a letter. And he wrote a letter to, to the sitting president, uh, accusing him of uh, you know, trying to be some superman or something like that. So this morning, I came across another letter, the third letter, uh, which is another tool, which was sort of like juxtaposing the two tools that were used. The former president used a letter and uh, accusing the, the sitting president of white monopoly capital and all those things. But in the 54th conference of uh, the ANC, there is an extract that says, uh, everybody in the ANC, uh, the society see them as arrogant, uh, the society see them as, as corrupt and everything else. Now, this was written in a conference. Now, uh, the language used by, the, by, by President Ramaphosa uh, seemed to suggest, or according to uh, the former president, seemed to suggest that he says everybody in the ANC you know, trying to mobilize and say everybody in the ANC is corrupt or something like that. But it's something that they had identified in the conference. Now, it is used in two different tools and the language or the ways that are used are, are addressing the same thing uh, that they, they collectively agreed that this is a sketch. This is, this is tainting the organization. But the same tool, somebody abuses it to demobilize the other. So yeah, tools are, can be very dangerous and the same tool can be used and be abused depending on who handles it. And, uh, and the deficiency in the language used, you know, at times uh, you, 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 your intentions are good, you want to uh, you know, correct somebody else, but you use a very different language that could have meant something else. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Master. Yeah, I think there's... Uh... Makes, makes it very interesting when you're trying to interpret from a distance, doesn't it, uh, as, as to how things are being said and, and the language that is being used. Uh, Nazipo, let's come across to you next. Um, yeah, thanks, Master. Um, yeah, Ivan. Nice, nice article on Pumelelo. It was nice. Like I, I jotted a few things that stood out for me. It's about how a system may be perfect in correct context but damaging in an incorrect one and there's also another one which spoke about the specific job will determine the tool for purpose they are great when appropriate for the case but can be worse instrument when the need is not befitting so i i like that i i picked it up i liked it i sort of can apply it even to me but it also tells me that you know what's good for the one like, you know, there's a good and bad in absolutely everything. So the, the tool can be good for one purpose and not good for the other purpose, which is absolutely great. What I also liked was the analogy from, I, I think it was Trevor, that spoke about how the tools, it's not about the tools, it's also about who's holding the toolbox. And I think that's also quite, quite powerful. But also I just want to add that, it's also about knowing how to use the tools, because if you don't know how to use the tools, it becomes a problem again. But thank you. Nice article. Okay, thanks, Nazipo. All right, uh, Jasper, let's get across to you. Uh, morning. Yeah, uh, I missed the, the first part of uh, uh, Mukwilelu's uh, writing, but from the bit I picked up, First of all, congratulations, Mpulelo. You have no excuse not to now continue on that writing streak and get that book out because you certainly have a gift with uh, putting your thoughts on paper and uh, also intersperse it with good analogies and uh, like that finishing touch there with the old broom and the new broom. Um, and uh, so just maybe starting there with the old broom and the new broom, I think that that's the challenge in our society is uh, the every new generation or 
in government, every new group of people coming in, uh, don't keep what, what's good and what worked. They just throw it all out and start all over again. And we, start, we see the cycle of loss of institutional knowledge. So uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, for me, it's about how do we connect uh, maybe the old handle who knows where the corners are with the fresh head who can uh, brew, uh, swipe clean uh, so that so that I think the, the thing here is not about uh, or in, in terms of uh, the old one or the new one, it's, a, it's an and. Uh, and I think the same holds for the so-called uh, ways of, of governance, democ democracy, socialism. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, actually sometimes untangle the two because it's, a, it's about, like you say, what is the context, what's the intent? So. Uh, I think uh, if, if, if we can all be primed with uh, an and attitude to say, how can we uh, give people freedom of economy and look at uh, society uh, and be fair to society, uh, we might come up with uh, a, a whole lot of better, uh, better fitting new solutions. And then I was thinking about the context. Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of people, it's about their paradigm that they have uh, adopted and that's how they see the world through those colored glasses and it doesn't matter what you put in front of them they just see that which they want to see through their glasses uh, glasses so the challenge then for me is uh, instead of trying to put new different things in front of people how do we find out what is the color of their glasses and find ways to change the context uh, because i think all of us uh, have experienced stuff in our lives that if you now think back on it, now that you have a fresh context as an adult, uh, that thing that was so scary or the food that was so bad or that guy that you feared so much as a bully today, uh, way back then, doesn't scare you at all and the food is not actually nice food and you know things like that because your context has changed. You now look at it from the perspective of, uh, of an adult. So, uh, so, in the, so, so, so what I'm just saying, you're a powerful writer. It was just a, from the little bit that you, uh, that I, that I saw towards the end, uh, you know, that's, that's where my mind was going in terms of the, the possibilities uh, of the context. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jasper. I sometimes wonder if as adults, we do have a fresh context or whether we get stuck in our old, our old frames of reference. And uh, what, what I really like about this is, is helping us, uh, actually develop those new contexts and, and start to think about things a little bit differently. You know, for me, it was interesting. I, I listened to some of uh, Kubis Nettling and um, uh, Brant Pretorius' uh, uh, webinar yesterday um, about whole brain leadership. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I preferred this discussion. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it gave me more to think and more practical, uh, more practical suggestions. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, theory there and uh, stuff that was maybe way above my pay grade, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so Lee, over to you, to uh, your thoughts and to wrap up the day. Uh, did Cecile want to say oh, Edward? No, I, I, forgot, I forgot about Ed, I forgot about Ed. How did I forget about Ed? You're hiding in the corner there, Ed, my apologies. Uh, over to you, Ed, we'll come back to Lee. As Cecile said, she, she missed everything because she was on the phone, so she's gonna watch it up later, so. Apologies, Ed. You're always being, being kind because I always struggle with Mello's name. So, um, but but thank you very much twice because one, you took a, a, a quite a complicated subject and distilled it down into some very easy to to understand nuggets. I thought it was an excellent piece of writing. And two, you brought back a wonderful memory for me because you talked about a time to laugh and a time to cry and I was running one day on a on a really cold day and I got my sort of gloves on I got my sort of colored tights on I got a, a strange colored jacket on I got a, a red hat on I got my colored buff on I was having a really good day the sun was shining and I was running through some woods and I met a few people and they're all miserable and as I was going along I was like waving saying morning 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 Anyhow, I got to the end of the woods and I realized I'd taken a wrong turning. And when I turned around and came back, I saw this sign that said natural burial ground. They were all going to a funeral. <laughs> and, and, and thinking about running, 
when, when I'm talking to people about big challenges and multi-day events, I say to them, your mind will come up with lots of excuses of why you should give up. And you need a toolbox full of reasons why you shouldn't give up. And I think Herman hit the nail on the head when he said you need a big toolbox because there's a big difference between, say, a box plane and a spoke shave or a ball pane hammer and a sledgehammer. And I think that's perhaps where your, your writing fell down a bit because it was quite binary. It was left and right, socialism, um, democracy. And I, think the, and I think that's the trouble with the world. We tend to think in two sides. And actually what we need is a multitude of um, different approaches because different things need different tools. And just to throw a spanner in the works, I think a lot of left-handed people find some very simple tools difficult to use because they're designed for right-handed people. And I think that's something else we should think about. Not everyone can use the tools the same way as we can. So I thought a great article and a great way to start a discussion. And I loved, I loved the writing, but that's my thoughts. Right, thanks, thanks, Etienne. I, I love your analogies as well. But uh, as a programmer, I only think in binary, so zeros and ones. So I don't get much beyond that. So, yeah, I, I don't know. And the question for me is, you know, if, if your toolbox gets so big that it becomes baggage, what happens then? So, you know, you've got, <laughs> you've got to watch out for these things. So, Lee, gets, let's get across to you to wrap up now. Well, thanks, Simple Maleno. I, I'm so glad we gave you a little nudge in the direction of, of putting your thoughts to paper uh, because, wow, just really rich with um, ideas and, and processing and, it's, and we could carry on like this for, for another little while. And so I would like to pick up on, for tomorrow, just thinking about the word that comes to mind is discernment. Uh, and and in Pumalelo, you use the word wisdom. And I, of course, kind of like that word. Um, <laughs> but um, it's about knowing what tool to use when, at what time. And, and, and how, do you re how, do you, how do you know that? Uh, so that's really what it's sort of, so how do you evaluate the context? How do you ensure that what you have in mind is going to be the right thing to do at the right time? We spoke uh, yesterday in the tipping point. Uh, we had this, I think Una raised it and, and maybe Nazipo as well, this push and pull. You know, when do I push? When do I say, okay, this, this, the tool I need to work with now is a jackhammer or whatever it is. I, I need to work at this hard and fast. And, and when do I pull back and say, mm, I've done enough work. You know, it has to sit in the oven to, to cook a bit. Um, so using lots of different analogies here. Uh, so, so that's really what I'm thinking about in terms of how do we bring this back to to what are the tools that I have? Are there tools that I'm missing? Uh, how do, and especially I think for me, it's, as I said, it's this discernment around what tool to use when uh, and recognizing that. So if we can just think, think about that sparingly. Yes, I thanks Edward, I love that. Uh, so let's think about that. I, I'd love to just hear, hear your, your thinking about how do you decide uh, what to do when and how. Thanks, Lee. I'm a little bit worried now. If you ever invite me over to dinner, you're going to start off with a jackhammer. It's going to wind up in the oven. I'm not too sure where that's going to get us. But anyway. that, that, that pretty much sums up my baking ability. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. All right. Yeah. And also loved, I also loved your, your use of the word wisdoms in the first uh, sentence of your or second sentence of your, of your article there. I see you put the S on the end, Mpulela. So we're conditioning you nicely. Good, good, good. So thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic day further. And uh, hopefully we see you in a little bit more sun tomorrow morning. So have a good one. And we'll see you then. Go well. Cheers.